And next up to the stage, I, I'll, I'll let Bianca take us away. I know that people are excited to see that we have a new uh, Paul Fremantle who has joined Weaveworks. So I know uh, folks are excited to, to hear from him and he's up next. So Bianca, I'll, I'll let you, you know, officially intro. Yeah, so we're going to welcome Paul Fremantle together with Alison Dowdney. They're going to talk about the business value of GitOps and the GitOps ecosystem today. So welcome, Paul and Alison. Hey, Bianca. Hey, Damani. Good to meet you guys. Um, really excited to be here. And it's, um, it's turning out to be a good day already. So let me just uh, start my slides up and... Um, what I'm going to talk about today are the business benefits of GitOps. And um, uh, I hope it follows on well from Alexis's talk. Uh, I think one of the things that we're doing is today is kind of meant to be slightly more businessy and tomorrow is meant to be more kind of deep technical. So that should make a fun day. But uh, we've already seen some of the kind of core technical benefits and approaches of, of GitOps outlined by Alexis. What I'd like to do is focus more on how it fits into organization, how we can really try and build a, uh, a, a kind of a genuine outcome, a return on investment from GitOps. And just, you know, this is not a particular quote from a particular person. This is every single CEO, CTO, CIO I've ever heard is like, we need to speed up. You know, and certainly as a CTO myself, this is a uh, something I've often had the urge to kind of, how can I get my team faster? How can I get higher velocity? And you might just think, well, are these guys all just being idiots? You know, do we really need to? Is this a, is this a genuine requirement? Is this something, are they just, are they just asking for too much? But there's genuine research uh, from Dora. So Dora is an organization that was uh, acquired by Google and is now part of Google Cloud. Uh, and they do kind of state of DevOps research assessment. And they found when they studied uh, organizations and they looked at organizations, DevOps processes, they, there were certain organizations that just had elite capabilities. And those elite performers are twice as likely to to meet their competitive business goals that's a that's a huge outcome so velocity correct velocity but velocity does lead to genuine business benefits and i, I think it's really important this statement i think this is from peter drucker who's a, a well-known vc but you know, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So it's absolutely important that we understand what are we aiming for and what particular measures are we aiming to improve. And the, the team at Dora have identified these four measures and they're very well known, but I am just going to, I'm sure you've come across these before, but I'm just going to talk through them again. So the first one is lead time. And this is how long it takes from a commit going into your version control to it going into production. And I think this is really important. I personally also think it's really important to look at the, the higher lead time. In other words, how long from the requirement going into your tracking system to getting into production. Okay. So I, 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 and the reason why is that one of the things I think is very important is it's, it's easy for people to become obsessed with metrics and then skew those metrics. So you can measure lead time and then everyone can sort of put easy commits into their, into the version control so as to, to make it easy to get them into production. So I, I do think it's important that you, you kind of, measure that the the actual requirements and how how those requirements get into into your production systems the next key measure is deployment frequency this is just a measure of how frequently do we deploy how often do we update the production system 
Uh, and that's, that is obviously a key aspect of, of GitOps is that we are speeding up and making it quicker and easier to deploy. Change fail is how far, is at what percentage of production deployments need to be rolled back. So in other words, how often do we put something into production that's bad and have to roll it back? And that leads very nicely into to, to mean time to restore MTTR, which is about how long does it take us to, to roll back a change? And obviously, the, the, the GitOps is really key for the deployment frequency and the time to restore because it, uh, it makes it super, super quick to roll back a, an invalid change. Now, I, it, as we'll discuss throughout this, this talk, it also, GitOps also has an impact on lead time and change fail. And so it has a direct impact on these four measures, on these four key metrics. And as we've just seen, these four key metrics are directly tied to how people actually succeed in business in their competitive environment and what their overall organizational objectives are. So how do we speed up? How do we improve these things? And I, I think I always fall back on three interlocking areas, people, processes, and technology. And the reason why is that I've, I've seen so many times organizations try and change and, and they focus on one of these or maybe two of these and they fail to, to make those changes because these three things interlock. Correspondingly, organizations that correctly get into that center, into that middle part where they, they move people, processes, and technology forward, see massive changes and significant benefit. And I, I would just want to start here with, I, I think, a key point, which is that you cannot increase velocity without increasing developer productivity. So I'm a huge believer that software velocity starts with developers. Operations is absolutely vital. I'm not denying it, but you know there are 20 developers to every operator out there. And that fundamentally, you've got to start by, by making those developers happy and effective. And if you look at the developer cycle, you know, code, commit, build, test, you know, the aims here are that we really need to maximize the time spent coding. I've heard this described as a tax. You know, everything else, every other bit of time you're not coding as a developer are times when you are sat waiting for something to happen. and and. There's a, there's a um, Hungarian psychologist, uh, and I cannot pronounce his name, it's Mikhail, that channel, blah, 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 and I uh, apologize. And, and, and he famously wrote a book called Flow. And, and I think this is really important. Developers get into an, a, a highly productive flow, and anything that interrupts that flow reduces developer productivity. So, this is a key point here. And so what, is, what, what do developers want from GitOps? What, how can GitOps help developers be more productive? I, I think the, the, the first thing is that developers need, always need a, a, a transparent but simple experience. So what do I mean by that? What, what I mean by transparent is as a developer, and, uh, and I, you know, I've been a developer and I still love writing code. I, I love tools that show me what's going on, but don't require me to do everything. You know, the, 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 the ability for me to devolve that, that stuff to a tool, but still know what's happening is absolutely key. And, and I think this is really important with, with a GitOps workflow. And tomorrow, you're going to hear all about the improvements to, to Flux with Flux v2 
uh, the, the emergence of the GitOps toolkit uh, and all sorts of things there. And the, this is really all about building that simple experience with transparency. Another key thing that I need as a developer is I need a, an effective local development environment. You know, I need to be able to work fast on my local laptop, have those fast cycle times. But really importantly, that has to then seamlessly move from development to staging to production. And this is one of the key benefits of building a GitOps flow for developers is the ability to know that my model for for development, my approach, my environment is then going to seamlessly move into staging and production. And we'll talk more about that. But I think there's, you know, there's key aspects in, in the Flux toolkit and in the GitOps uh, approach, which really help developers build this, build this fast environment. So for example, the, the ability to, to watch image uh, deploys and, and update Git and redeploy so that I can just speed through this is a, is a key part of what's been done in the GitOps world. The next thing I want to talk about is how, how this then translates into teams. Because developers work in teams, but teams are also the point at which we get a process. Teams are really closely linked to how we improve our processes because process design, process models have to be built around teams. And the Agile Manifesto says the best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. And I'm a huge believer in this. And I'm, I'm really, I think there's a, there's a really key point here, which is that those self-organizing teams need to have the right empowerment and the right mission. So the way I put this is you can't increase velocity without thinking about the boundaries and freedom that teams have. I, you know, I, I used to have a, a development team uh, based in Colombo and Sri Lanka. And, you know, in Colombo and Sri Lanka, there's no good coffee shops. It's, it's, it's a real, it's a, it's, I'm, I'm addicted to coffee. And every time I go out there, there's no good coffee shops. But you know, a self-organizing team, you know, could, it doesn't mean, hey, you know, I've got a bunch of developers. They suddenly say, hey, we're self-organizing to, to, to turn into baristas because we need better coffee. You know, that's not what it's about. The self-organizing is being given the right vision, the right context, the right boundaries, and then being set, told, you are now empowered to make that happen. And uh, I think a really important part of this is this concept of psychological safety. And another study from Google called Rework found that high-performing teams uh, basically also were closely correlated with psychological safety. So those measures of business success were also closely tied to psychological safety, meaningful work with clarity. And I'm not saying that we can solve all of psychological safety with GitOps. It's, that's, not, that's clearly not true. But there are key aspects of GitOps that are very important to creating a culture of psychological safety. And I believe that this is really due to three aspects. The first is, I mean, obviously, any CI process aims to catch mistakes early through automated testing. But we all know that mistakes, that bugs sometimes reach uh, staging and production environments. And so reducing that mean time to repair is a huge, huge part of psychological safety. Knowing that I can deploy frequently and those deployments, if there is a problem, they, we use progressive deployment, canaries, uh, blue-green, we understand what's happened quickly before it affects anybody and we roll it back. The second aspect I think is really important is this concept of continuous operations. 
continuous operations is about building self-healing automated environments. And self-healing automated environments are just, as, as Alexis was explaining, are so much more robust and resilient. And that is a really key part of psychological safety and, and teams is building processes that give teams confidence in the environment. How many times have we been involved with a system? I, I know I've been involved in these kind of systems where there is just massive fragility. Everyone is like, I will not touch that code. I will not touch that environment. I'm not going there because I know one little change is gonna mess everything up. So continuous operations is a really key part of, of psychological safety that I know I can make changes effectively. And all of this is really tied to, to that thing I was talking about earlier about transparency and visibility of processes and deployment. It's really important that we have this visibility of exactly what's happening, how it's happening, when it's happening. And I, and I know this is really key to GitOps is that visibility of the pull request, the merge, the, the rollout, the, the entire environment. And I know this is also a big set of improvements around Flux 2, which are building the ability to, to, to see what is happening in the pipeline, to, to validate exactly what's happening at every stage. And so what do all these things bring? They bring exactly what Alexis was talking about 20 minutes ago, which is that scale is not stressful. Because that is the other key part of stress in, in developers and, and organizations often is that we start to get success and we scale up and we don't have the right environment, the right process to do that. And it suddenly becomes highly, highly stressful. So uh, I, I want to bring in briefly Conway's law. So Conway's law is that broadly the structure of organization, it maps itself into the structure of technology. And when I was a, a junior developer at IBM, I came across this. Uh, this was famous there. This was a long time ago. Um, and my, my thought was, these idiots, you know, these managers, why are we, why are we building the wrong stuff just because they, they can't manage properly? Then I became a manager and I realized that you cannot fight human nature. This is a great cartoon which shows uh, some of the organizational structures of various companies uh, in a slightly humorous way. I don't know if you can see clearly enough, but the Oracle one's particularly funny. Uh, all this red bit here is legal and all this blue bit is engineering. Um, Microsoft, they, they all seem to be shooting each other. I don't know why that is or what's going on there. Um, but so, you know, culture and, and human nature is a tidal wave. You've got to organize in a way that understands and works with Conway's law. So you've got to build team organizations with clear boundaries that work with effective processes and give the teams visibility and control. And that builds psychological safety and builds velocity at the team level. So We've talked, and, and you'll see uh, Cornelia talk about this in much more detail this, this afternoon. But we've seen this view that, you know, the evolution of CI to CD is just I, I add in deployment into my existing developer flow. Uh, and that is really not right. Uh, you know, the, the reality is that deployment is a separate environment. And this is, I think, one of the key learnings of GitOps is that we have continuous integration that pushes into continuous deployment using GitOps. And this, uh, these things that Alexis have has talked about and Cornelia will talk about later are absolutely important to getting the right technology for increasing velocity. Now, I'm not gonna go into the principles of GitOps again. You heard a very clear exposition of those from from Alexis, and I'm sure we're going to hear about them later in the day. But I do like 
to think about this evolution from DevOps to GitOps. And, and what it really is, is a clear technical shift from imperative automation to declarative automation, from automated mutation to immutability. And, and clearly from this single state to the concept of reconciliation and convergence. And so these changes, these technological changes also can fit with the teams and the people to create a highly productive velocity. So where we have automatic deployments, declarative deployments reconciled at runtime, health checks everywhere, progressive delivery with canaries, that transparency and visibility I talked about, and the seamless movement between dev staging and production. So these are all technical benefits. And you might ask, well, you know, Paul, what are the, you know, are these business benefits real? And we have seen across different customers significant improvements by, by applying GitOps. So just by fixing continuous delivery and continuous automation, continuous operations, 50% improvements in lead time, clear reduction in change fail ratios, 50 to 75% increases in deployment frequency, and MTTR dropping from days to you know, tens of minutes. Uh, and more importantly, you're gonna hear about that from Steve Wade, who worked at, a, at um, NatWest Bank Metal and now works at Underwrite Me. Uh, and he uh, is one of the people who worked with, with Weave to do some of these projects and, and measure some of these outputs. So I really recommend you keep listening for that talk. And just to give a push, there are a whole load of great talks. I've talked about Cornelia's talk. We've got Michael Hausenblas from AWS later. We've got uh, Ivan Pedra, Pedrasas uh, from Control Plane talking about security. Uh, we've got Luke Marsden talking about ML ops and, and Matt Jarvis talking about security from SNCC. So we've got a whole bunch of excellent talks coming. And right now we have, I'm going to hand over to Alison Dowden, who is going to talk about the GitOps ecosystem, which I think is really important. So, uh, and um, I just started working with Alison. I think she's got a very useful insight and I believe that the ecosystem is also an important part of this improving velocity. So thank you very much. And I'm gonna hand over now. All righty. Hi everyone, um, I'm Alison. And um, yeah, today I'm going to be talking about the GitOps ecosystem. Now let's get this screen share on the screen. Um, so yeah, the GitOps ecosystem, we've got a nice title slide there. So as you can see, um, we were from this graph, um, GitOps has grown. The interest and the hype around GitOps has grown so much from when it was first uttered um, on the internet, right? And so with this, whole ecosystem has sprung up of GitOps stuff and things. So what does this ecosystem look like and where does it sit? So we've got the cloud native, we've got the whole cloud native space here. We've got Kubernetes, um, which uh, some of you may be probably are familiar with. Kubernetes sits over here. And then we've got CI. There's a lot of CI tooling and stuff that sits in the cloud native space as well. And then we have GitOps. Um, so here, um, let's take a closer look though, about closer look into what's inside this, this bubble. Um, so there's lots of different tools and products around that are centered around GitOps that fit into this GitOps ecosystem. And this is only just a small hand um, and yeah, but with, with these, with this, these tools, they often follow a few different categories. Um, so they often fall into integrated solution, 
where they add GitOps into pre-existing code bases by using a library of sorts. And this library, like, it might be something they've written themselves, or they might have dropped in some SDK for GitOps. Yeah. There's also a parallel way of, of having a GitOps application where GitOps is enabled through a separate plugin, kind of like how we've got Helm and Helm operator running alongside each other, where Helm operator enables Helm to be GitOpsable. And then we have standalone GitOps solutions. So in these solutions, you have um, applications which are built purely around GitOps. Your tooling's built purely around the notion of GitOps. So things like Flux and things like Flagger, for instance. Um, so now that we've kind of broken things up into a few different categories, what is this? current state of the ecosystem now. I've got, got some pictures um, here. So the first thing is governance. As a project in the CNCF, the Flux project's been set up to be governed neutrally. A set of goals to become a home for best-in-class GitOps tools and implementations. This will allow for a path of greater community contributions that aren't just solely influenced by WeaveWorks. There's lots of learning happening at the moment. People are still trying to figure out what GitOps is. And that's kind of also the reason why a lot of us are here. We're, we're still trying to find the answers. Um, there is a lot of duplicated effort out there. Folks are writing their own ways to integrate GitOps into their applications. This has its upsides and its downsides. Having all these different implementations pop up can inspire other people to like make cool things and all that. But it also has the downside of we've got the same functionality written a couple times. And there's a bit of mixed messaging about what GitOps is. Now, you're going to hear a little bit more about this in Cornelia's talk later on. Um, so do check out that talk. Um, so yeah, those are those four things which kind of describe some of the current key things in the current state of the GitOps ecosystem. So what does the future look like? So first of all, Flux is going to become not only just for Flux, but a home for all things GitOps. It's going to provide governance and support to GitOps related projects. So one of the key thing that I see happening soon is Flagger joining the Flux project, as in um, the Flag project will live inside the Flux organization on GitHub. Um, so this, this will allow for like shared, a shared common space for all sorts of different GitOps projects to live. We're going to see a lot of people using the GitOps Toolkit SDK. Um, this enables people to build GitOps-enabled Kubernetes controllers. Um, so we're going to see a GitOps GUI. This is going, at the moment, GitOps is pretty inaccessible to those of you who may uh, feel a bit uncomfortable, like writing in the terminal, and all those of you who might be more visual learners. Um, so a GitOps GUI is going to make GitOps more accessible to all sorts of different users out there. We're going to see way more education and training resources around GitOps. GitOps Days is a step forward in this direction, but there's still lots of room, room for us to grow. Ideally, um, what we could be aiming for is an open source curriculum that lives within the Flux project. We're going to see a lot of cluster API and GitOps. We're going to see a lot of people using GitOps to manage their clusters. So I imagine that people are going to have these Git repos where they've got all of their cluster definitions and the, the, the stuff in Git is going to be reproduced, um, make clusters on AWS, Azure, ETC. We're going to see a lot more of a clear, concise, and unified message around what GitOps is. 
what projects need to do in order to meet the criteria of having GitOps. And not only that, these guidelines will be vetted and reviewed by, by people in the community. And the, these guidelines will hopefully be living inside the Flux project. So overall, I think all these things that when we talk about the future, it's going to bring our ecosystem and our community closer together. You're probably thinking now, um, Oh, I really, really want to like get involved, um, you know, help move some of these things forward. Well, here's a couple of ways you can get involved. Um, you can get involved by attending, uh, the next flux community meeting, which is at 3 PM UTC on the 19th of November, you can join the CNCF flux mailing list, and you can also, uh, uh, have a look at the issues in the flux community GitHub. So yeah, that's really all I have for today. Um, if you have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to add me on Twitter um, or just uh, hang around the GitOps Day Slack channel on the Weave community Slack. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Thank Allison. you so much, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, always a ball of energy and always providing some good insight. Thank you so much. Hi, oh, it's a pleasure. See ya. Bye, Allison. Thank you very much, everyone.